Okay, so today we are talking about, like it says, arc measures. When we talk about arc measure, that is meaning that if we have a circle, well, I'm not going to give it away. Never mind. We'll keep going. Arc measure. So two things you'll be able to do. Find arc measure, and we really aren't going to talk about congruent arcs very much because they're kind of lame. So, arc measure. Finding arc measure. First, a couple of terms. The first term is central angle, which we are looking at here. Just like I typically say with these slides, instead of writing down the whole sentence and drawing a picture and doing all that stuff, I would draw the picture, and if you need to make a couple notes to help support the picture, then that's fine, but I wouldn't worry too much about getting every single word down on the slide. But anyway, the central angle of a circle is an angle whose vertex is the center of the circle. Right? Nothing too crazy. So here we've got our full circle, and they create an angle with these two radii, and we would call the angle that they create the central angle. Now, like you can see here in the red, they would call then this arc that is created, because it doesn't create a line, right? We're talking about a circle, so we would create an arc. They call it the circular arc. Probably, I won't refer to it as a circular arc very often, probably just straight up the arc that those two lines create. Nothing too crazy. Another thing to pay attention to is that when we want to talk about the measure of an arc, it is like this. This would be like the arc symbol, which kind of makes sense, right? So we would say the measure of arc AB is 59 degrees. Any questions so far? Yeah. On the test correction, do I have to go through that extra credit once? Uh, test corrections are not our priority right now. We can talk about that later. We probably shouldn't have our iPads open because the slides aren't even posted, I don't think. Right. So there's no reason to have our iPad open. All right, another two terms. We have what's considered the minor arc and the major arc. When we look at that example, the minor arc is what is directly created and probably what we look at more naturally by our angle. All right, the minor arc also, minor means what? Like, smaller. right, smaller. So our minor arc would be the smaller arc. In contrast to that, sure, our child arc, that could work too. In contrast to that, the major arc would be the other side of it, right? The larger arc would be the rest of it. Now, it's not. there's not just two categories, right? I mean, we have minor arc, which is the smaller one, major, which is the larger, and then also, like maybe some of you can see at the bottom, we would consider it just to be a semicircle when the arc is at exactly... 180 degrees. So then there is no minor, there is no major, we just would label it a semi, a semicircle. Oh, where is your... Put that there. Am I gonna do your homework for you yet? Oh, okay. Whoop. Now, when we talk about finding the actual measure of an arc, right, we know the angle measure, they'll give us that, but then when we talk about the measure of the arc, here's how we do it. The measure of a minor arc is the measure of its central angle. So that is really nice, right? The central angle is 50 degrees. That means the measure of its arc is also 50 degrees. Pretty easy. So what do you think? Oh, don't look, don't look, don't look. What do you think the measure of the major arc would be then? Right, 360, because that's our entire circle, minus the measure of our minor arc. Our 310. How are we feeling so far? 
decent. All right, now I'm going to do your homework for you. And there's nothing past that that's new for today. If we look at number one in exercise one through four, identify the given arc as major, minor, or a semicircle. Then find the measure. So we're actually going to go the other way around. First, we are going to find the measure and then identify what type of arc. But if we look at N, M, how did you find that? Very good. Yeah, they give us all these other arcs besides Q. So 360 minus the rest of them would give us 55, Ethan. Okay. So if we look at NM, would this be considered a major or a minor arc? A minor arc. I guess I didn't need. How about this is fifty five. How about J L M? Let's see. J L M. What would the measure be of that? Let's see, one, two forty five. Would that be major or minor or semicircle? Major. And OK. Would be fifty five plus sixty five plus 60. What does that give us? 180? So that would be a semicircle. Yep. And last one. L M whoa. L M N would be 65 and 55. Major or minor? No, Braden's right. Good job. Minor. That's what we've got for today. Yes. If it's exactly 180, we have a semicircle. It's a semicircle. Now, that should allow you to do, unless I'm forgetting something. that. Um, do we want to talk about congruent circles for a second? No. What do you mean no? It's on your homework, but I think you can figure it out. Well, yeah, just, yeah. Congruent circles are just the same as circles. That would, yes. Yes, they are. Congruent circles would have the same, what, like, specific length or factor would we look at? Hey, get your guys' mass over your mouth. We could look at diameter or or the radius. Yep, if they have the congruent radius or congruent diameter, then we're, we've got congruent circles. So that should take you through number six and seven. Cool? That's it. You guys will finish your homework today in class, and then we will talk about the exam a little bit. Because we have an exam book review. This is what? The best day? No, this is like the best ending of the school year. Oh. You know, like now Actually, today, today is the final day. Oh, oh, we still have a lot of time left. It's all next week, Jeff. No, but that was Jack's point. I got it. All right. I need to stop the video. Sorry, virtual students that are watching.